Now we just gotta hope to get back into America. This is the easternmost town in the United States. We run into a little bit of a dilemma right now. Stay tuned, and we'll tell you about it. We're up in Canada today at Roosevelt Campobello International Park. America's Parks is going international, Haley. Oh, yeah. All right, so here's the situation. We're trying to get to this peace park between Canada and America. I thought it was in America, in Maine. When we GPS the coordinates, we realized that it's actually in Canada. So we don't have any passports on us. We're gonna go inside right here where the border crossing is and talk to some custom officials and see what it takes to jump across into the Great White North for the day to visit this park and see how it goes. So the US Customs agent just said, give it a shot. Odds are they won't let you in without a passport, but the worst they can do is just turn you around. And here we are, we're coming up on it. We made it. Um, I don't know, we think it was a little sweet talk in there. I think they got a policy they need to follow, but uh, she was very nice. It's just a mile and a half across the border. Now we just gotta hope to get back into America. So here's what we got going today, Haley. We got the guidance tour of the cottage, 10:15. We missed that. Tea with Eleanor at 11. I didn't know she was still alive, but we missed that as well. The fun tour at 1:30. I'm always out for a fun tour. I'm up for a fun yeah, tour. I'm always kind of a, a guy that enjoys. F -U -N. Welcome to the Roosevelt Campbell International Park. We're the only international park in the world like this. We are fully operated, owned, and um, governed by both countries, both being Canada and the U.S. And this is where Franklin Roosevelt had his summer home. And he had been coming here since he was one years old with his parents because he was a colicky baby and they thought that the salt air would help him out with that. Uh, so you got to meet Chelsea, who's behind the desk. She's the one that gave us the 30 second review. Outstanding job, Chelsea. Thank you so much for all your help. We have an action packed day planned here at Roosevelt Campobello. But right now we're looking at the Roosevelt home. This was like his summer cottage, is that what they said? Yes. You check cottage. this thing out, look at this. FDR. Oh my God. Just a small little getaway for him in the summertime. of the times he came as president though he actually stayed on his navy ship which is kind of special they uh, actually dredged out the narrows where the bridge is so that his navy ship would fit up through yeah <laughs> exceptions for the man <laughs> well he was nice president, president after all <laughs> so i guess when you're born into a lot of money and you're the president of the united states they take good care of you and behind me is the backside of the summer roosevelt home uh, they said that he he and his family came out here for about two and a half months, I believe it was, uh, once a year. And then it sort of slowed down once he uh, contracted polio. We're walking out to the water right now and we're gonna take a look at the beach here. Ready for the fun tour, Haley? Yep. Can't wait. This better be a lot of fun. Folks, it's fantastic, unbelievable, and definitely not ordinary. It's the fun tour. I'm having fun already. Ah, uh, we are gonna tell you secrets and stories that no other guide here at Roosevelt Camp Bell International Park even dare <laughs> tell you. I was good until she pulled out the harmonica. Give yourselves a round of applause! Yeah. And <laughs> skip it away. Passamaquoddy actually used the island for hunting and picking berries. He had over a million stamps in his collection. I said 50,000. You still having fun? Yeah, this is great. L I A H, Haley. Yeah, do that. Hold on. It's my last one. Look at that. Wow. What's the fun meter at right now on a scale from zero to ten? Yeah. 
One, two, three. Roosevelt! Woo! We're sitting here watching other people play croquet. <laughs> we just missed our chance. I thought you made reservations for 4 30. So we were at Camp Obello Island. We came in right here from Maine and the Roosevelt Camp Obello site was right here. And it was suggested that we drive all the way across the island, which is about 15 minutes to the Head Harbor light station. You ready? Let's go. Let's go. The way they said it here was the tidal change was what? Was it 40? 40 feet. 40 feet. 40 feet. Other parts of the Bay of Fundy are 58 feet. And you have a window of about four hours mm -hmm. to get over there and get back. Or else, as you can see, incoming tide rises at five feet per hour and may leave you stranded for eight hours and you can't wait or swim because it is dangerous currents and very cold water. So proceed at your own risk. So check this out, Hilly. This is all, you see all the seaweed and all the kelp down here? This is all, when that tide comes back in, this is all underwater right here. Yeah. I don't think this thing would pass an American safety standard here. This is nuts. So this is the strip of land I was talking about. I put it at probably about uh, 35 yards. Although Haley up here in Canada, I probably should be using meters, right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, quick footnote, we're driving down, we saw the speed limit sign, and Haley's like, wow, 80 miles an hour. I've never seen something like that. I'm glad we realized that's kilometers because I don't think the police officer would have bought the excuse that we thought it was 80 miles an hour. But anyway, this little strip of land is the only passable portion to get over to the lighthouse up there. You have two hours before full low tide and then two hours after full low tide. Four hours if you don't make it across and back. You are stuck on that island over there for eight hours. But we're getting close, making our way over to the lighthouse. Did you catch this? These are the fog horns right here. The fog horn can start automatically anytime. Please note that noise levels can cause hearing damage. Let's get out of this little location. Although it doesn't look like any heavy fog is rolling in. Not a spot we want to just congregate, is it? So we're going to the very end right now. And we are standing on the helicopter pad. Look at that. Wow, look at this. Right on the point of the island. Yeah. Maybe a little panoramic here. a pizza place straight ahead with one car in the parking lot. Let's do it. What do you say? Want to give it a shot? Oh yeah. You good with this? Yep. Sounds good. Looks like it might what be the I, owners in the parking what lot. What do I park? Right here? I think so. Let's just try it. So you heard about our desire to have some pizza over here. That is the border checkpoint right there. Thankfully, nice gentleman Haley let us in with our driver's licenses. So, uh, quick stop. We're gonna get some food over here at the uh, only pizza place in town. How's the pizza? Really good. Very good. Remember, you're not in New York, you're not in Chicago, so you gotta give these people some grace. It's honestly like it's not bad. They're doing pizza okay up in it's Maine, really huh? Good, yeah. Up in northern Maine? Uh huh. Thanks so much for watching. We gotta make our way now back into the United States. Let's hope we can get there in time for dinner. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. And remember, Haley, what we tell everybody? There's always room for you on our next National Park adventure. Don't forget that. America's Parks is now international, baby.